Okay, good morning, uh, friends in Indonesia. Good uh, afternoon, uh, those in Canberra, and uh, good day everywhere, wherever you are. Welcome to the Indonesia Project's COVID-19 webinar series. My name is Arianto Patunru, and I'm hosting this event with Nur Kamala Muliani and Baskara Adiwena. We acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians and pay our respect to the elders past and present. We are grateful for the support from the Australian National University and the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Today, we are going to discuss how firms in Indonesia cope up with the COVID-19 pandemic and how they, the use of digital technology helps them in that regard. We have invited two distinguished speakers for this webinar. Dr. Mukti Suyahmun is from Dana Reksa Research Institute and Dr. Maria Monica Viharja is from the World Bank Jakarta office. They will present the findings from their high frequency surveys on Indonesian firms, Uti with Ba Uti or Mukti Suyahmun uh, with the Dana Reksa's Pulse Check surface and Monica with the World Bank's Digital Merchant surface. I'm sure uh, most of you are familiar with Uti and Monica. Uti studied here at ANU's uh, Uncordon Department of Economics and Monica at Cambridge and Cornell. And as usual, we will have question and answer session after the presentation and discussion. But if you want, you can write your question anytime on the Q&A box, not on the chat box, and we'll attend to them in the Q&A session. So, for the first presentation, let me invite Uti to start and share her uh, presentation. Go ahead, Mbak Uti. Okay, thank you, Ajo. Thank you for ANU Indonesia Project for inviting me, sharing some of the DRI research and that we presented in the DRI post check. So I will share my screen. Okay. Okay, so first uh, I will talk about the COVID situation and then follow on by the impact to business and how they cope uh, with this uh, impact of the COVID pandemic to their business. Uh, if we look at the COVID situation, we know that globally the case, the positive case is still continue to increase. Although some of countries like Thailand and Malaysia uh, but Malaysia recently also have an increasing number of cases. And if you look at the United States, uh, I'm afraid that they will have the third wave because the, the graph is start to picking up again. And, and for Indonesia, we know that uh, currently it's kind uh, up and down, but still in the high, uh, high rate of a positive uh, case of COVID. And this COVID actually, we have the effect of the all economic system, like Baldwin mentioned in one of his paper he, uh, about how COVID affect the economy, not only on the household, but also in the business sector, government and financial sector. <laughs> we can, um, if we remember, like the first impact of COVID globally is when they have an international supply chain disruption when China announced that they have this positive uh, COVID in January and they, they locked down their uh, port, it actually affect almost all the supply chains globally and also in Indonesia. And if you remember the Indonesia, our uh, economic growth in the first quarter actually declined uh, below our expectation because first we still expect that our uh, economic growth in the first quarter is still high because we only have this uh, restriction on the mid of March. But since the lockdown in China, which actually disrupt our supply chains, the import from China, actually is already impacted Indonesian economy so much in the first quarter of 2020. And then the second quarter, it's uh, as expected, is uh, contracting uh, until minus 5.3. This business, uh, the one that we will discuss in this session, also impacted a lot by this COVID uh, pandemic. As we know, the real sector 
uh, currently already recovered and the one of the indicators that we use to see whether the economy exp expanded or uh, contracted, we use this PMI, Purchasing Manager Index uh, indicator. We know that as we see in this graphic in the March, almost all PMI contracting a lot uh, like in globally until 40, while the 50 is actually the benchmark. If the indicator is above 50, it means that the economy is still exp expanded. But if the indicator is below 50, it means that the economy start to contract. But lately, from July until September, the PMI in almost countries and also globally is, also, is already started to recover uh, above 50, which means that some of the country already expanded, the economy already expanded. It means that there is a, already the economic activity is recovered, although it's not back to the level before COVID. And this uh COVID also affect the GDP growth and in last quarter the second quarter almost all country have a negative growth like India the economy contracted until minus 24 percent while Indonesia compared to other is uh, quite uh, not that uh, hard it's only minus 5.32 Last quarter, the, quarter, the second quarter, the countries, the Asian countries that still have the positive growth is only Vietnam and China. And actually, for the third quarter, China growth is already 4.9, which is almost uh, returned to the level before COVID. And how about the Indonesia? If we look at the Indonesian cases, actually, the top five provinces that have the highest positive case is truly really cover almost 60% of Indonesian economy. So we can imagine if there's a, for those provinces, any restriction or any uh, slowdown in the economic activity will affect 60% of Indonesian economy. So that's why in the third quarter, the growth of Indonesian contracted until minus 5%. The, those five provinces are DKI Jakarta, Jawa Timur, East Java, Central Java, West Java, and South Sulawesi. I have this a snapshot of Indonesian economy. So we divide it into three sections. One is GDP or economic growth. The other is external balance. And the last one is the price stabilization. We will have our third quarter uh, growth next week on the 5th, if I'm not mistaken. So the, and we also expect that the third quarter is still in the negative range, although it's not as bad as the second quarter. So we can say that the worst is already passed. So we now started in the recovery process. The economic growth last quarter is minus 5.32. And then the sectors that contracted most are the sectors that need face-to-face -face or direct interaction between the, the consumer and the supplier. So the transportation and accommodation, food and beverages are two sectors that contracted a lot, minus 31 and minus 22 for last quarter. And purchasing managers index in August started to recover, but in September last month, it started to decline again. And some part of it is because the restriction that or PSBB that uh, implemented again in Jakarta last month. From the external balance, the foreign reserve um, is uh, quite good. It's still in six months import. And this foreign reserve also can uh, defense the rupiah when we have uh, depression or pressure from the global situation. The trade balance, we still have positive trade balance. Although for the positive trade balance, we have to carefully analyze the cause of this trade, surplus trade balance. Because the surplus trade balance can be caused by increasing export is more than the increase in import, or declining in import is more than declining in export. If the second case happens, it means the economic growth in the next period will be lower. 
because Indonesia is very highly uh, highly depend on import raw materials or capital goods. <laughs> Luckily for August and September, our surplus in trade balance is, was caused by the increase in export is greater than or larger than uh, increase in import. So the import it started to increase or improve, and you see in and it also consistent with the improvement in the purchasing manager index. The exchange rate uh, it's up and like uh, this uh, until yesterday we have uh, appreciate quite uh, appreciate a little bit to 14,625. We have the, the weakest uh, exchange rate is in March and also in June. So currently it started to appreciate. The inflation for the last three months, we have deflation. So it actually reflect the weak uh, consumer uh, purchasing power. And also uh, if you look at the consumer confidence index, that uh, published both by the RI and also Bank, Bank Indonesia. In September, the index, the co consumer confidence index also declining, means this uh, increasing positive case of COVID actually weaken the sentiment or makes the more consumer more uh, pessimistic compared to previous months. So that's why the inflation is still uh, uh, we still have deflation instead of inflation. For the retail sales, we still have the negative compared to last year, but actually it's improved compared to July. So from this snapshot of Indonesian economy, uh, if we look at the more uh, on the detail, we know that last quarter almost all the expenditure is uh, negative, have a negative growth, especially, especially the household consumption and investment. So currently, Indonesian economy depends only on the government expenditure. And we hope that government expenditure can stimul stimulate the household consumption and also investment. Export and import is still uh, depends on the global market, uh, while currently it's recovered, but not back to the previous uh, level before the pandemic. So this is the for sectoral, as I mentioned earlier, the largest contraction is the transportation and also uh, accommodation. Manufacturing, which is uh, the, the largest sector in Indonesian economy, also contracting uh, around 6%. The one that still expand, uh, expand in the last quarter is Infocom, information and communication. Because with all this, everything from home, work from home, school from home, actually the demand for uh, uh, Infocom increased quite significantly. And also the health sector, because this uh, current crisis is related to health crisis. If we know one of the uh, indicators that we use to see how the the economic situation is we use this uh, mobility index provided by Google. If we look at this uh, graph, we can see that lately the mobility, oops, sorry. What did I do? Okay, the mobility is uh, return some of them back to uh, level before the crisis, especially the grocery and also parks. However, if we look at the workplace and also transit station and retail, we see that uh, although there is a risk, um, loosen of the restriction or PSBB currently is the PSBB transition, but the level is not returned yet to the uh, level before the crisis. So maybe this is, will be our new normal. So we need to accept that the new normal after the COVID is not the normal before the COVID. So maybe the workplace, many of the offices or businesses now realize that actually doing work from home is more efficient than doing work from the office because means that they don't have to pay for the building lease and also uh, some companies doesn't have to provide lunch and everything and the transportation allowance. So. I think the workplace uh, situation, which is now is only almost uh, declining minus 30% compared to 
before crisis, maybe this is the new normal. So that's the situation uh, related to COVID. But now how the, this COVID impact to the business sector? Based to uh, data from the BPS, they have a survey and then actually some the business operation do, during this uh, social restriction or COVID, they decline. The, uh, like the education service actually only less than 30% of their operation compared to situation before the COVID. While trading is uh, like 70% compared to uh, before crisis. Transportation is uh, 60%. Infocom uh, and others is just like uh, shown in this picture. From this graph, we know that the social restriction actually affect the business operation. And of course, this declining in the business operation also affect their revenue. And it also uh, from also from the BPS survey, we know that there is some sector that percentage of company of those sector who experience declining in revenue for like accommodation, other, other services and transportation and warehouse uh, sectors, actually almost 90% of their companies in that sector experience the declining of revenue. While other sector, the lowest percentage is like water and waste management, electricity and real estate. We can see that the real estate may be because uh, the business or the business operation before the COVID is also weak. So during the COVID, the, the change is not as much as the other self, uh, sector like accommodation and transportation. This is for the whole uh, <coughs> business, uh, including uh, big uh, companies and also medium and small uh, enterprises. And the RI also make some survey. We did some survey. Uh, we have, uh, we do the consumer confidence index survey every month. So with that survey, we have around like 7,000, uh, 700 respondents in the six areas in Indonesia. So during the survey that we did for the consumer confidence index, we can add some question related to issues or uh, issues that we want to analyze. So I think in the beginning of uh, COVID around April, we have a survey that asking the household that have business, what the impact of the pandemic to their business. So. 90% of the our uh, respondent, the respondent that also having business, they said that 90% of them experience the revenue decline. And 30% said that now they have difficulty in marketing their product because we understand during this restriction, some of the informal sector cannot actually market their product because they have to stay home and usually maybe they're street vendors, uh, something like that. But with this restriction, they have to stay home and they cannot find their market. Uh, because of that, they have to uh, decline or reduce their product. And also, they, some uh, like 11% have difficulty in uh, finding the raw materials. This is because maybe of uh, also caused by this restriction, they cannot go to, to look for these raw materials. They have to rely on the online uh, transaction and not all these uh, MSME actually have access to uh, online transaction. So what they do to adjust, uh, to adjust this uh, with this, uh, situation. Nationally, the MM, uh, SME that have this kind of difficulty in their business, they reduce their work on hours. So 40% of these uh, enterprises or these companies, small and medium enterprises, reduce their working hours uh, as, uh, nationally and then also reduce product production quantity go to digital marketing, only 25% go to digital marketing. Uh, and also they, uh, some 
some of them also postpone their production and only luckily only 7% of the respondent actually do the layoff. The interesting thing is that uh, we can see the difference between companies or enterprises in DKI Jakarta, in Java Island and outside Java. In Jakarta, most of their respond, 41 or 42 percent of the respondent actually now uh, enter the digital marketing. So they know that uh, they can have more market, a uh, broader market if they go to digital marketing. And uh, while in Java Island, the response that they uh, do is they reduce the production quantity. So to adjust with this declining of the revenue, actually they in Java, they reduce the production quantity and outside Java, they reduce the pro, uh, working hours. So this... Uh, Uti, yes. Sorry, Uti, can, can I cut you uh, just yes. for clarification? There is a question mm -hmm. from Bimbika from Prospera. Okay. Uh, could you explain? Could, could you please explain how you selected the 700 respondents? Okay, the 700 respondents we have in the six uh, areas and we have this, uh, uh, we, first we select the, uh, the area, like the, we have the urban and the rural area. The urban area, we have the uh, city of the province and also city of the kabupaten and kota. Uh, and then uh, from this, uh, once we already select the area, the, the city, then we select the Kelurahan. And from the Kelurahan, we have uh, some of the, uh, some methodology to select uh, each, which uh, household in that Kelurahan or in that uh, area uh, we choose as a respondent. And because we do it for the Consumer Consumer Index, we require them, uh, we don't have this panel data, but instead uh, one of the uh, requirement is that this household is not being surveyed for the last six months. The reason why we have this requirement because this is the, uh, the, the respondent uh, selection is for our consumer confidence index. So if we do this, we uh, interview the same individual, it's highly it's a high possibility that the answer will be biased because they just get bored to be asked the same question so the respondent selection is followed the consumer confidence index survey so we have this uh, methodology oh, so you also cover small micro informal yes. okay thank yes. you yeah yeah so because we go to uh, because we have the urban and also rural and this rural sometimes it's just uh, area that in the mountain or we have the the surveyor have to go there for like uh, any any mode of transportation so it's not uh, really as, uh, easy to access also uh, can i continue Ajo? Thank you, Uti. Go ahead, please. Okay. And next, how, uh, uh, based on the BPS survey, so uh, in our presentation, I, we, I used two data. One is BPS, which is a uh, more uh, larger respondent than our uh, DRI survey. And this uh, BPS will also include all sector, uh, all business, not just medium and small enterprises. And also, uh, consistent with our finding, that 27% of the business starting to use internet. And uh, the largest sector that use online marketing or internet because of this pandemic is education sector, manufacturing sector, and trading sector. And 15% of the business actually do diversification. So they're not only <coughs> doing their current uh, business, but they diversified their business to others. And the most, the sector that um, doing the, the most is the manufacturing sector, accommodation, and the trading. And also, 5% of the business actually change to other sector, different sector, because maybe they see the current sector is not as profitable or they cannot get uh, uh, enough return from their current sector. So this is from the PPS. 
the interesting uh, finding that we have so last month we have this uh, uh, focus group discussion with the CFO Club Indonesia. So this CFO Club Indonesia actually consists of CFOs or big companies uh, in Indonesia. So we have FGD with five uh, CFOs and they come from uh, different sector. One is uh, services sector, one is the uh, finance sector related to the automotive, one is a uh, prudential is insurance, and BAS is uh, BISF is uh, chemical, they provide chemical, and the last one is the petromine, there's uh, oil companies. And actually, the impact of the, this pandemic to, the, to these sectors is different. It depends on their characteristic, their business characteristic. For example, the services, uh, they are a B2B, uh, B2B business. Actually, the impact for them is very mild. So we have one until five, the scale. One is mild and five is very uh, negatively related, uh, impacted by this pandemic. So these services actually, the impact is only one to 1.5. And actually Indonesia is still um, can grow double digit. And there's still expansion and relocation from some multinational businesses to Indonesia. So this pandemic also uh, re make a realization that actually the, the world is depend too much to China. So once China have a lockdown, actually the global uh, economy has uh, disrupted. So with this uh, COVID situation, the business realized that they cannot put their business only in China. That's why there is still a lot of opportunity of relocation from China to other Asian countries. And Indonesia actually still, uh, based on this uh, company, the MF Group company, he said that Indonesia actually is still one of this destination that uh, investors look for. So for these services, actually the impact is quite mild, 1 to 1.5. The Indomobile, actually because they provide financing to automotive, like uh, uh, what is called uh, multi-finance. So actually in the beginning of the pandemic between April and June, the impact is quite hard. Uh, the scale is 4 to 4.5. But along the way, they can start adjust with the situation and currently the impact is only 3.5 to 4. So, and the, for the prudential, they have two impact, positive and negative impact. The negative impact because now the insurance maybe now becomes the lowest priority of the household's expenditure. So they experience the decline in the premium renewal. So some of their customer who and have the, uh, the, the insurance is uh, ended, they not renew this premium. That's a negative side of this pandemic. But the positive side also that they have less um what it's called claim because uh, uh prudential also provide health insurance so they said that they have less claim from the health insurance because many of the customer reluctant to go to hospital before maybe they just have a headache or they have like a uh, stomach ache they go to the hospitals but with this uh, situation current situation I think we just go to the hospital if really emergency. So they have this positive side of the uh, impact for the company is that they have less claim, especially the health, the health claim. For BISF, they, pro they provide the chemical. The impacts actually mix. Some of their customer actually have uh, experienced decline in production, but some of their customer also increase their uh, demand for chemical, especially for house care, uh, home care, and also personal care. So uh, once they have more diversif diversified uh, business, actually they're less impacted by uh, this pandemic. While the pet petromine, because they have this uh, downstream uh, product for oil, and they have a long-term contract, so the pandemic is not really impact their business. And the last slide, 
when we ask how long this pandemic will last, this is uh, highly related with the impact that they suffer. Like the Indomobile, because they're impacted, their impact is like very high until four and four and a half. They said that it will take them two or three years to actually back to their normal. And when we ask, most of them uh, predict that this pandemic will end or start to recover or things return almost to normal is uh, mid next year or even end of next year. And it also depends on the, uh, the development of the vaccine. So like the, then what the initiative that they do for uh, in their companies, it's have a variation. Some of them said that they try to optimize the financing than working capital because uh, many of the companies have the problems in cash flow. They need to buy, they have a cash out, they need to pay the fixed cost, but actually they don't have a cash in, they don't have any revenue. So that's why they try to optimize the financing and the working capital. The second initiative that they do is they do product in innovation and also market services uh, our, our customers. Like the Prudential, the insurance company, now they start selling through internet, not face-to-face -face, uh, meeting with the potential client, but they do it uh, through internet. Although they also admit that it's less efficient than face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meeting with the uh, potential client. And for the Petromine, they try uh, their service or the way they uh, they adjust their business is they lengthen the payment cycle to help the customers because they have a long-term contract, but now they modify the payment cycle so it can uh, match with this uh, ability of this client or the customers. They also increase the digitalized internal process. So I think this COVID actually push us to do every, to go digital, digital to digitalize everything. Uh, not the CEO that asked us to do the digitalize, but actually this COVID somehow forced almost everyone to go digital. And also uh, with this current situation, they have this freeze in hiring and also try to streamline the organization. So they really see which section that actually can be removed because it's not really uh, affect their product productivity. So many of companies actually uh, try to streamline their organization. And uh, for BISF, they have another um, initiative, which is try to have this uh, global efficiency initiative and also uh, rationalize the office space because with the work from home, actually they don't need uh, as much space that they uh, need before. So with that, I end my presentation and then we can discuss further in the Q&A session. Thank you, Acha. Thank you so much, uh, Uti. That's very comprehensive and uh, with very rich uh, analysis of how these firms increase this, their resiliency uh, amidst <clears throat> COVID and you're ending with the digitalization uh, effort, I think provides a, a very good segue to Monica's uh, uh, presentation in the second uh, session. So with that, I'll invite Monica to start her presentation. Over to you, Monica. Hi, Patch. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Let me just share my screen. Yep. Okay, good uh, afternoon, people in Canberra, and good morning, people in Jakarta, and uh, everybody else uh, around the world. 
nice to see you. Uh, nice to see some uh, old uh, colleagues. This is a little reunion for me. Um, today I'm going to present uh, some findings from Bukalapak and World Bank collaboration in conducting a digital merchant survey. Um, okay, let me uh, start with the first slide. So this survey is part of the COVID-19 observatory. I think many of you have already seen the findings from the high frequency household phone survey, uh, I think a few weeks ago, that was uh, pre presented by uh, my colleague Ririn and Coco. And uh, this digital merchant survey is part of this uh, project as well. Uh, this uh, survey is in collaboration with Bukalapak, uh, Bukalapak is uh, one of Indonesia's largest e-marketplaces for you uh, who might uh, not be familiar with uh, Indonesia's uh, e-market uh, landscape. It's a short uh, eight-minute uh, survey and the survey was broadcasted through uh, various Bukalapak uh, chat, uh, and, uh, uh, chat and platform including uh, block notification, uh, pop up, sorry, pop-up notifications, blog posts, SMS, emails, and the survey was broadcasted to Supercell, uh, who are digital merchants on Bukalapak, who, uh, who paid for uh, premium services to advertise their, their uh, products uh, prominently, more prominently on Bukalapak platform, and also to non-supersellers with hundred or more transaction. And the reason that we targeted these uh, types of digital merchants is because we want to target merchants who are more serious in terms of selling their products. And this, this survey was open between May 20th to June 27th, and we collected more than 1,000 respondents uh, uh, on Bukalapak. And then we analyzed the survey, uh, we weighted the survey using what is called the calibration rate uh, weighting techniques based on Bukalapak uh, corporate data that we received from Bukalapak consisting of, of the uh, consisting of the distributions of merchants by their locations of the province by their sales pre-pandemic in February 2020 and then uh, also based on their highest selling product category pre-pandemic uh, also in February 2020. So uh, just the, a summary of the findings from the survey. We found that uh, between uh, February and April 2020, online sales uh, appeared to be more resilient than offline sales. I'm going to talk about the details in my next slides. And uh, among the challenges that the uh, digital merchants face uh, included um, constrain access to additional finance and loans and access to materials or finished goods to resell. And this, uh, this, these challenges uh, are, are, are the challenges that uh, merchants with increasing sales uh, and higher demand face. And for merchants with declining sales, uh, reported uh, constraints uh, such as uh, slowdown in demand and also government containment measures such as closures of mall. We know that uh, large-scale social distancing measures uh, started in Jakarta on April 10th and uh, was followed by other districts and uh, provinces, provinces as well across Indonesia. And half of merchants say that they expected to be out of business within three months if existing condition persisted. Among the coping strategies, uh, I think some of these coping strategies have already uh, mentioned by uh, Bauti as well for general firms general enterprises. Among the coping strategies included uh, shifting product categories. So many of the merchants actually uh, shifted the products that they sell and they also increased their online sales, uh, uh, switching from offline to online. And then they also adjusted their numbers of employees. And uh, what is also interesting in here is that uh, we found that uh, digital uh, merchants were likelier to receive uh, COVID-19 related government support programs compared to the average firm in the first round of uh, COVID-19 business pass survey that uh, the World Bank also conducted on 850 firms across Java, Bali, uh, North Sumatra, and South Sulawesi. Um, and we also found that 
uh, digital merchants uh, with various uh, employment size uh, receive uh, different uh, types of government assistance programs with medium sized bukalapak merchants who are more likely to receive government assistance program via tech support programs while micro sized merchants tended to benefit from cash assistance and then small sized merchants were more likely to receive government assistance program through electricity subsidy before i go to the main analysis uh, let me uh, 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 give some pictures of the peak covid 19 uh, merchants profiles so among the 1000 uh, respondents uh, representing Bukalapak supersellers and merchants with more than 100 recorded transactions, close to 36% of these digital merchants were also active on two other platforms, namely Tokopedia and Shopee. And uh, the highest share of merchants in uh, pre-pandemic were selling uh, products under the product category hobby and collection. Although this might not be the uh, might not be representative of the whole market if we include uh, the non super sellers and merchants with less than 100 uh, recorded transactions, and 50% of merchants were selling products only under one single product category of goods, for example, like women fashion. Uh, and on average, 71% of merchants' total sales came from online. And on average, uh, merchants in the sample only employed three workers or uh, can be called micro merchants. So let's look at the impact of the COVID-19 pandemics uh, on digital merchants. So online sales appeared to be impacted less than offline sales. 46% of merchants experienced a decline in their total sales that includes off of offline and also online uh, sales uh, in all platforms, but only 36% experience a decline in their online sales on Bukalapak. And sales performance seems to be associated with employment size. Uh, with micro and small merchants who are more likely to experience a sales decline compared to medium and large. And merchants selling essential products during the pandemic were more likely to experience a sales increase. And these products include office products uh, such as software, table, chair, headset, and baby products, including uh, milk, diapers, toys, and apparently plastic water pool, and health products, uh, including mask, uh, supplement, vitamin, immune boosters, people want to get healthy, and also women fashion. Many of them were selling clothes masks. And among merchants who, uh, whose sales uh, went up, meeting higher demand was challenging because uh, mainly they don't have money or loan and they were unable to get additional materials. When we discussed this, this result with Bukalapak, they said that uh, 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 the, one of the reasons why uh, digital merchants have been having problems in terms of accessing uh, uh, finance and loans uh, is because between the month of May, uh, sorry, the month of March and May, financial institutions tightened their lending policies, uh, such as a fast reduction in approval rates, credit uh, scoring changes, and a lot of them uh, even like stopped uh, lending uh, entirely. And uh, the reasons uh, why uh, digital merchants were having problems in terms of getting uh, additional material or uh, goods to resell uh, was because um uh they, they were having a raw material inventory issue due to the closing of china's port for some times as many of them get their imported uh, goods from china and among merchants uh, whose sales went down uh the top two reasons why their sales went down were because uh, no demand or demand went down and then because of the government containment measure including uh, closures of malls. And we found that for merchants who were impacted the most by uh, the government containment measure were also those merchants who have a higher offline sales uh, out of their total sales. Uh, these are also merchants who make, uh, sorry, who, who make a bigger shift uh, from offline to online compared to all other merchants who answer uh, uh, who answers lower or no demand or other uh, reasons for the decline in their sales. The second impact uh, besides uh, sales is on their costs. 
Uh, interestingly, 64% of digital merchants said that they experienced no change at all in their labor costs, but more than half of the digital merchants said that they experienced a total increase in their, uh, in their total costs, mostly coming from input costs and also other costs. Merchants who did not experience any change in labor costs are associated with some uh, product category, for example, home care and women fashion, uh, and, uh, and, and less, uh, for example, other product categories such as food. And this may reflect the fact that many of the digital merchants might be self-employed. They're not employers, so they don't experience any changes in the labor costs. And also because uh, many of them uh, were uh, resellers and not producers of goods. Um, merchants uh, also uh, adjusted their numbers of employees. 7% 7 7 of merchants increased the number of workers, 18% reduced the numbers of workers. And the largest share of merchants who increased the number of workers came from uh, those merchants who sell uh, products under the home care category. That includes, for example, uh, cleaning equipment. While the largest uh, share of merchants who reduced employees came from hobby and collection. And uh, we, we also see a slight, sh a slight shift in terms of the compositions of uh, merchants by employment size with more micro merchants uh, with employment size between one to four from, a small, uh, from small merchants with employment size between five and 19. So this uh, indicate that many of the small merchants actually reduce uh, their numbers of employees to become micro. So merchants also uh, try to cope with the pandemic with many strategies, among which we see in the data that they shifted their product, uh, uh, their product category. 40% um, of merchants changed one or more product category during COVID-19, placing uh, home care, such as uh, selling cleaning equipment, as the uh, top product category, with many sellers switching to more food and health, uh, as well as care and beauty. Merchants also slightly diversified their product categories. Uh, Pre-pandemic, 51.4% of merchants selling products only under one product category, for example, women fashion. But by April uh, 2020, uh, we see more of uh, merchants selling product categories uh, and uh, selling products under two, uh, 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 two product categories, for example, women fashion and food. And uh, Bukalapak uh, told us that the fluctuation and volatility was not normal during this pandemic with changes of product category mix uh, uh, by these merchants within weeks and less predictable. So people staying home uh, more, um, uh, makes uh, consumption change significantly. Merchants also shifted business from offline to online. So, uh, Pre-pandemic, digital merchants already have a high share of uh, online sales. Uh, uh, online sales, seventy-one percent. But by April twenty twenty, they even increased by six percentage point to seventy-seven percent uh, of their total sales uh, 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 being online. And in February, pre-pandemic, thirty-six percent of merchants uh, did not have offline sales at all. But by April. Another 7%, 43% of total merchants has switched purely online. Uh, merchants who experience a sales decline made a more decisive offline to online shift. Merchants also adjusted their numbers of employees. Firing and hiring was associated with, with sales performance, with merchants who increase uh workers were also uh more likely to to be merchants who experience a sales uh increase and um in, in increasing uh increasing uh numbers of workers uh is also associated with uh receiving government assistance program we're not uh when uh we we're, we're not claiming uh a causality here but uh, just purely association that uh, those merchants who increase workers were more likely to uh, receive government assistance program compared to merchants who reduce uh, workers. And also among those who increase workers and receive government programs, they're more likely to receive it via tax uh, programs. There could be a, con a confound confounding factors such as the merchant size, for example, like 
uh, medium sized merchants uh, maybe more likely to increase uh, their workers, more likely to uh, receive government assistance program, and more likely to receive government assistance program through a tax program. Uh, merchants also anticipate closing down their business. Half of the merchants who uh, half half of merchants expected uh, that uh, they would close down their business within three months if the conditions persisted. Uh, only one third of merchants said that they could continue beyond one year. And merchants who can keep their lights on longer, who can sustain their business longer, are associated with higher sales performance. 46% uh, um, out, out of total merchants whose total sales went up between February and April 2020, 46% said that they could sustain their business uh, for more than one year compared to only 30 33 percent whose sales went down and uh, it's also associated with higher online sales uh, so uh, the, the average uh, the average online sales for merchants who said that they uh, sorry the, the average offline sales offline uh, uh, sales shares of merchants who said that they could uh, sustain their business uh, beyond one year is uh, is 25% compared to let's say uh, merchants who said that they could uh, only sustain their business between uh, one uh, between one to three months. Uh, their offline uh, or average of offline uh, sales uh, share is uh, much higher, about 34.5%. Um, merchants who 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 can keep their lights. Uh, on longer are also so associated with those merchants who have been selling on Bukalap, uh, Bukalapak platform longer. Um, and, and also uh, merchants who receive government assistance programs uh, are also associated with, with, uh, with uh, uh, more uh, sustainable uh, business. Among merchants who uh, sales uh, who, who who reported uh, that their sales uh, went down, uh, and who could not survive beyond uh, three months. Uh, a large majority of them, almost uh, fifty percent of these merchants, said that uh, the reasons for their sales go down uh, came more from the uh, demand side issues rather than the supply side issues. And now let's look at. Uh, 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 a government assistance program that they received. So 36% of digital merchant surveys said that they received at least one or more government assistance programs. And the largest number of merchants who received them uh, received, received these programs through cash assistance programs. This include pre-employment card, a staple food card, family hope program, uh, and direct and conditional cash transfer at the village or at the local government level. And then the second largest share of merchants who received government program received them through electricity subsidy. With small and medium-sized merchants were most likely to receive government program compared to micro and large. But 39% of merchants with a sales increase also received government assistance, while 66% of merchants with a sales decline never received or did not know about uh, any of the government assistance program. And we also see that uh, merchants with various uh, employment size also receive uh, different types of government assistance program. For micro size, for micro size merchants with uh, employees between one to four, uh, they receive government programs mostly through cash assistance. And cash assistance here include uh, a pre employment card, uh, uh, food voucher card. Uh, conditional uh, family hope programs and unconditional uh, cash transfer at the village and local government level. While medium-sized merchants were more likely to receive government assistance program, mostly uh, through tax support programs. And uh, for small-sized mer uh, merchants, they um, are most likely to receive uh, government assistance program through electricity subsidies besides other programs, which is not too surprising uh, because many of these many of these digital merchants are actually household enterprises so they uh, also received a government assistance program 
through household targeted uh, government assistance programs rather than enterprise targeted government assistance program. But then for medium sized merchants who are more likely to be in the tax system, uh, they're more likely uh, to receive uh, the tax support program compared to the micro and small. And among those who receive cash assistance programs, they uh, uh, majority, uh, not majority, but the largest share of them receive the cash assistance program through local governments. And uh, this could be the, 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 the uh, could be the result that uh, many of these merchants are actually located in Jakarta, DKI Jakarta uh, areas, uh, which, uh, uh, which distributed uh, additional local government uh, uh, initiated uh, uh, government assistance program. And 32% uh, uh, of those uh, merchants who receive a cash assistance program received it through non-conditional cash, cash transfer at the village level and 28% received it through pre-employment card and only 12% 12, 12 uh, received uh, cash assistance through a uh, food voucher card and only 3% received government assistance uh, uh, cash assistance, government cash assistance through uh, PKH programs or the conditional family hope programs. So we can see here that actually digital merchants uh, are not are, 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 are not uh, those merchants who come from households who are being targeted uh, for the poor household uh, government programs. Sorry, can you still hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Okay. And among merchants who received the debt restructuring program, 42% received uh, the program through extension to loan maturity, while another 41% received uh, debt restructuring program through loan uh, repayment de uh, deferral. 59% received the debt restructuring program via commercial bank and 30% uh, received the same program via other finance institutions. And when we asked these merchants, uh, one government assistance that they most preferred to receive and uh, that they would find most effective, 30% of them said cash assistance. And uh, followed by 15% of them said electricity subsidy, and then another 12% of them said uh, tax support program. Uh, also, Bukalapak uh, distributed some assistance programs as well to their, to their merchants. And when we asked uh, uh, the merchants, uh, one Bukalapak, uh, one most preferred Bukalapak programs that they would find most effective in mitigating the pandemic, 34% uh, of them, the largest, share, uh, the largest share of the merchants said that they preferred service charge reduction. And then uh, the next most preferred Bukalapak programs is delivery cost discount. So it seems that programs that help them to reduce their cost of productions are the two most uh, preferred uh, programs by Bukalapak. So I will end my uh, presentation here. Looking forward for comments and questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Monica. That's a very uh, impressive and in details. And um, <clears throat> before we go to question and answer session, uh, I hope you don't mind uh, attendance to share uh, one minute of your time at the most for a little polling. Uh, we have to do this for administrative purpose. So Dodi will launch a little polling that you can fill very quickly before we continue to Q&A. Please, now it's on, so just uh, fill it in, please. Okay, Dodi told me that we can still continue while you guys are uh, filling in the, the pollings, the, the polls there. So let's go to Q&A. Um, I can see um, 
Bang Kahlil has two questions there in the Q&A, but uh, I wonder if Bang Kahlil want to ask question directly. Is Pak Khalil there? If not, I will just, okay. Bang Khalil, you're on, yeah, Bang. Okay, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Bang. Okay, uh, question for Mukti. Um, do you have any information on sectors that may never recover? And uh, I guess the following question would be, what to do about them, uh, what the impact on the economy would be? Uh, for Monica, my question is, uh, there, there is a statement out there that government assistance may actually create or uh, uh, prolong the existence of zombie companies. Companies are supposed to go out of business without the COVID, without the pandemic. Maybe not this year, but next year. And uh, government assistance actually are prolonging the life of these companies and therefore reducing overall uh, national efficiency. Can you comment on this statement? Thank you. Thank you, Bang Kahlil. So that, that's two questions. Let me add on one more question from Asep Cahyana. Silakan ask. You're still on mute. <coughs> Can Dodi unmute Asep Chayana? Okay. okay, while we are waiting for Asep, uh, uh, let, uh, let's just go to answers from Uti and uh, Monica. Uti, can you go first? Okay, thank you Bang Khalil for the question. I think you also asked this question a couple of weeks ago and I haven't still, haven't still the, the precise answer for that. But I think uh, the question is which sector is will never uh, recover? I think there will be many sectors that will change their uh, business model. Uh, and it's uh, especially the one that have required face-to-face -face interaction between the customers and also the, the service provider. For example, uh, like the cleanings uh, one of them is like the the one that if this this condition is prolonged is the one for for example the uh messenger oh this is the pemijat what it's called i i cannot really pronounce it the the one that have a uh, specific skills that need to do it uh, through the face-to-face -face interaction that kind of the services will be uh will never be recovered and they need to uh, adjust with this current situation. So I'm, um, I'm not really can answer directly what kind of uh, the, the specific sector, but what I can uh, think is the sector that really need the face-to-face -face interaction then and cannot be replaced by others. For example, there's some uh, services or sector that uh, previously have to be a face-to-face -face interaction, but somehow the technology or the uh, internet can replace it but there is also some sector that cannot replace by the technology even the technology cannot replace it so for example uh, the one that uh, i think now also that for hair what is called if you want to cut your hair now instead of go to the barber shop or the hair salon people do it home uh, at home by themselves and also about the mashas and kind, that kind of services I think the one that I can uh, think right now the one that cannot be replaced by technology it will be never be recovered I hope this answer your question I think uh, harder to answer your question Bang Ahlil. next time we see each other thank you Uti. Monica yes so uh, I mean, if you see from one of uh, my slides, it shows that many of the digital merchants actually receive government assistance programs that are targeted at households and individuals, uh, individual workers, such as like pre-employment cards, and not enterprise-targeted 
um, uh, government assistance programs. So, um, so when when so I think you know it's it's really hard to answer it's like um, uh, you know uh, how or like you know uh, what what to do uh, with this government assistance program that that may create uh, or like prolong the zombie businesses because uh, for micro and and small merchants like most of them receive government assistance programs uh, through uh, programs that are targeted at households and not enterprises so you cannot argue that. Uh, government assistance programs that are targeted at enterprises uh, are actually prolonging the zombie businesses. But one lesson uh, learned here, I, I, I think, is that uh, the government needs to see uh, uh, household targeted government assistance programs and enterprise targeted government assistance programs, especially for the micro and small merchants, as one integrated uh, uh, as one integrated like assistance programs, they 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 cannot separate uh, the household targeted government assistance programs from the enterprise targeted uh, assistance programs because many of these uh, micro and small merchant and household enterprises they receive they may receive both. If if you don't integrate these two uh, types of government assistance programs, then some of household enterprises might be completely uh, excluded from uh, both. Uh, government assistance programs, and some might might receive both. So, um, and as as we know, like household enterprises don't separate their financial uh, family family financial account from their uh, business account. So, you know, cash assistance that they received uh, from the household targeted government assistance program can go to their enterprise and vice versa. So um, it's 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 hard to say for the micro and merchants, um, uh, micro and small merchants, but for uh, the medium and uh, uh, large merchants, uh, this question might be uh, might be more relevant because yes, uh, targeting is always an issue, uh, both for the household uh, targeted uh, government assistance programs and also for the enterprise targeted uh, government assistance programs. Um, so. Um, I don't have like uh, the silver bullet answer uh, how um, how to uh, basically um, uh, you know separate uh, or target uh, you know the the the, the uh, more promising businesses uh, and not the zombie businesses. Uh, but yes, uh, you know, a government can always like uh, you know distribute. Uh, uh, the program, but not targeted well. So, uh, yeah, targeting is one issue that the government should uh, pay more attention to. Thank you, Monica. Monica, you mentioned about these merchants who could not survive beyond three months. And I understand your survey was when? June? So, do you know the conditions of these merchants now? May, May and June. So, uh, uh, the good news is that we're planning a second round for this survey. So Bukalapak has agreed to, uh, to to do a second round, so we can come back to these merchants again. And also uh, Shopee will be joining uh, our effort too. Uh, so Shopee, okay. for the second round, uh, we will also collaborate with Shopee. Uh, okay. Hopefully we, we, uh, we can monitor uh, their progress uh, from, from, from June onwards. Okay, thank you. So we have two quest written questions, but before I read this, these questions from Ruth, Nikki Julu, and Krishna Gupta, let me uh, invite Nicholas Shed from IFED to ask his question. Nicholas, you're on. Yes, Salaman Pagi, everybody. Thank you very much for these interesting presentations. Um, I, I do apologize. I joined a little bit late, so maybe I've missed some information that, that would make my question redundant. But uh, I wanted to ask if, um, through your, your surveys and studies, if you've seen any particular difference in the responses from um, uh, SMEs in, in rural and, uh, and the agriculture sector compared to the more urban and, and um, SMEs from, from other sectors. Uh, the question is of particular interest for me as, as IFAD, we are the, the International Fund for Agricultural Development. So we, we support a lot of uh, rural um, and agribusinesses. So I'm, I would be interested in knowing if, if you've seen a, a big difference in the way that they have responded or the impact that they are facing due to COVID. Thank you and over. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, let me 
let me first invite Hal uh, to give his comment. Hal? Oh, uh, uh, thanks, Acho. Uh, but maybe I should wait in the queue. I think I think Krishna and uh, Ruth were ahead of me. Yeah? Okay, let me let me read their questions then. Uh, there there is one question from Ruth uh, to Monica. The figures on the early slide, slide 10 and 11, shows that almost all large merchants experienced increasing on sales. What are the reasons for this? Do you find any shift on, on the consumer preference, which now prefer large merchants compared to smaller or micro ones? And uh, the third question is from Krishna Gupta. Uh, do we have, to both speakers, do we have a sense how hard it is for these firms, large and small, to go online and or broadening their business scope? I imagine only larger firms have the capacity to do that. Perhaps this question relates more to uh, Monica than Uti, but you can also address that Uti. So maybe I'll start with Monica uh, now and then to Uti. Silakan Monica. Yep, uh, to Ruth, uh, if you see it, uh, on, on that slide, I actually put a small note that actually there's only one large uh, respondent. So large here uh, by employment size uh, with 100 employees and more. So there's only one large uh, respondent. So when we, you know, uh, uh, when we wait it, uh, I think uh, it'll end up to like 230 something respondents. Uh, so, sorry, no, uh, never mind. So it's, there's only one uh, large respondent um, uh, among the 1,000 respondents for large. So that's probably so that's that's why uh, it's like one respondent said that they they, they they experience a sales increase. So that's why uh, it looked like it's it's very big. Uh, and for Krishna, uh, in terms of the uh, the small and large and their capacity to shift online and to uh, expand their products. Um, this is something that we, we have not looked at in terms of uh, whether or not those who are larger are more likely to shift online uh, and, and, and more likely to expand their business. But I think it's not only about the size as well. It's uh, what we what I already sh uh, showed in my slide is that those who experience uh, uh, more prominent sales decline are more likely to make a bigger shift from offline to online. So uh, I have not I have not uh, I have not disaggregated uh, across like uh, uh, business size, but then that's one fact that that those who experience uh, more prominent sales decline are more likely to make a bigger shift from offline to online. And uh, I can imagine that also happens uh, in terms of uh, diversifying their products or shifting products. I mean, those who, who, who are struggling more in terms of selling uh, products that are not no longer popular during the pandemic, they will make the shift. But again, uh, I have not looked at it uh, in terms of uh, the different capacity uh, among different uh, business size, so I mean it's, it's a good it's a good uh, it's a good comment, and uh, uh, you know I will I will uh, look at it. I, I think I think this, uh, there's there's a good uh, policy implications if we disagree by 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 business size. Okay, Uti. Yeah, I think for the first question, whether we can distinguish between rural and urban, uh, I, we haven't disaggregated between urban and rural. We have the data, but we haven't really seen is there any difference uh, pattern between urban and uh, small and medium enterprises and urban and rural. But we can, uh, our data uh, is available for that. And then the last question about uh, whether uh, only large company can expand to the online uh, marketing or online uh, online business. I think it's, uh, I agree also with uh, Monica, it's not only because of the size of the firm, but it's more on the willingness of this uh, the business owner itself because uh, like Monica said, maybe the one that experienced a drop in sales, then they realize that actually they can uh, 
recover their sales during uh, using this online platform. And also, I think I noticed that in during this pandemic, actually many of the small and even micro, micro or medium, uh, micro or small enterprises, actually started their business using online. So uh, there's a lot of this uh, online uh, businesses emerge during this uh, pandemic. So it's not between not necessarily uh, depend on the size, but uh, they for one who sees the opportunities then, and also it's not very difficult to start the online uh, platform or online business uh, currently in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Uti. Um, Pacho, can I make one, one more comment? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, just to, to add to uh, about these comments as well. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, but, but, but Uti is, is, is right in, in the sense that um, going like onboarding online uh, has a lot to do as well with digital uh, literacy uh, and also you know other behavioral issues such as like uh, having trust to go online uh, and if you see in uh, this uh, slide right uh, the uh, like largest share of, of the enterprises of the MSME in Jakarta uh, we're going online compared to compared to enterprises in non DKI Jakarta. So it might have to do with uh, you know not only digital literacy uh, and behavioral issues, but also uh, could be like internet access, for example. So again, like it's not necessary uh, necessary that is is about like important. Uh, it's about uh, business size. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, I'd like to invite Hal and then uh, Risti and then Bimbika from Prospera. So Hal, you go first, please. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks, Acho. And hi again to Mukti and Monica. Trimakasi Banyak, really interesting talk. I, I enjoyed it and learned a lot from it. Just a couple of questions, if I can. First of all, a general point, is the IT system holding up okay? I mean, it's in all countries, it must have been under tremendous pressure to the sudden surge of youth in, in IT. And so did you get any sense of that from the survey of whether the IT has been holding up? Because that's crucial, I guess, to the transition to e-commerce. A second one, and this is perhaps a little bit like what Kali was asking before. So you mentioned Mukti, the cash flow story. Do we get a sense of what's happening? I, I know it's not the primary part of the survey, but it's kind of interesting to know, I mean, are there, do you get a sense of there being serious, you know, zombie, zombie debtors in the system or how firms adjusted, were the banks lenient in, uh, you know, in calling in credit lines or did they extend credit lines? Because I guess after Bank Indonesia, um, uh, uh, after Bank Indonesia liberalized some of the monetary policy provisions. And final point is, um, do you notice any story of the government, the government stimulus once the, the money started going out? I guess it was really starting to go out in June, maybe, so maybe it's a bit early for the survey, but I, in other countries, I think there's been lots of evidence that once the fiscal stimulus measures start getting spent, uh, you notice a pickup in business activity. Just wondering whether you've got a story in your, um, in your survey. But uh, uh, thanks again. Great to see you both, and thanks very much for really interesting talks. Thanks, uh, uh, Next is uh, Risti from Deakin University. Risti, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Pajo. Uh, uh, thanks very much, Ma Uti and Ma Monica. Really enjoyed the presentations. Um, so I think I have about three questions. Uh, probably modify the one that I put in the Q and A um, box. Uh, the first one, I think, to Monica, uh, could you please elaborate more on the tax programs that you mentioned in the presentation? Um, and th and the second one, this is quite, I guess, in line with uh, what you explained earlier to the earlier question. Um, I I get a sense that there seems to be like a possible mismatch between, you know, what the government has provided uh, and what the digital merchants probably need. So. In your survey, uh, did you ask the digital mer merchants like what challenges they are facing and what 
what it will take them to go to the next stage. Um, I'm just thinking in terms of, you know, sort of like the tra trajectory, what is the next step for um, these companies? Uh, for example, like based on the survey that I did um, uh, interviewing a couple of agri-food uh, e-commerce companies, uh, some of the smaller ones who initially just join, you know, big marketplace like Tokopedia and then Bukalapak, they are actually also aiming to um, set up their own platform in the future. Uh, do, do, you, do, you, do you get a, you know, a sense of that sort of uh, trajectory? And I think the last one probably can also be answered by um, Mbak Uti. Uh, do you see that whether this, you know, positive trends in terms of increase the online sales will continue uh, post-COVID, um, whenever it is? Um, because when we did a survey, so it's, uh, we first asked some of these companies in uh, March, you know, so, sort of just uh, after the outbreak of the COVID. Uh, and then it, there was very positive story back then. But then when we asked just a couple of weeks ago, there seems to be quite a uh, change in the, in the trends, uh, uh, you know, a bit declining consumption, I think because of the increased job insecurity and so on. So um, do you also sense the same sort of trends that, that this all, you know, positive uh, and significant increase in online sales probably wouldn't continue, um, you know, in the long run. That's all. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you, Risti. Please bear with me, uh, Uti and Monica, uh, uh, while I'm reading a question from Bimbika. So she's asking, um, she was curious to note that women's fashion, care, and beauty also included uh, PPE, so i.e. masks, hand sanitizers, etc. Did, did, did I get this correct? Did she get this correct? Was that deliberate or for any other reason that you did not have PPE as a separate category? I wanted to understand what the prospect, prospects are, i.e. based on measures you are using, ability to survive beyond X months, boost in sales, retain workers, etc. for those who shift towards selling PPE. Did you get that? So, uh, let me go first. To sorry, Uti. sorry. What 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 is what is PPE again? PPE again, Pajo. Sorry, I I the the uh the, yeah the internet was uh, personal protective bad. equipment. Um, oh. Yeah, masks, hand sanitizers, and etc. So so the 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 question was the question sorry, I I couldn't really get so the. the yeah, let me read it again. It says, curious about uh, women's fashion, care, and beauty that also included PPE in, that, in those c categories. Um, so was that deliberate or for any other reason that you did not have PPE as a separate category? So instead of separating PPE from women's fashion, uh, care, and beauty, uh, but you actually included PPE, in the category of women's fashion. So what's the reason for that? Okay, so Uti, can you respond first to those questions? Okay, thank you, Pak Hal. Uh, about the uh, IT, whether the IT uh, sectors will holding up after the COVID, I think with this COVID, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, this COVID actually forced everyone to go online and also it stimulate these um, IT companies to improve their services. Because uh, I think now since everyone's depend on IT, uh, internet, then both the consumer and also supplier try to uh, improve uh, their services. So I think the IT will still have a good prospect uh, in the future. And the second one about the cash flow story, uh, I think uh, maybe most of the company is not go to the bank try to find the credit line because they see that the demand is not there yet in the market. So they don't have any plan to actually uh, expand their expand or continue their business yet. But then the, the what happens uh, for in the company is that they now use their funds that 
plan to be used for investment. Now they relocate or they relocate their funds to finance their working capital. So uh, for the uh, if we make the analogy with the household, it's just like Indonesia. We have this term mantap makan tabungan. So actually, the company also do the same thing right now. They use their tabungan, their saving, their investment plan to finance their working capital. So that's why I think many companies will have will take some times for them to actually recover. Because now they they already use their investment plan to uh, finance their working capital. Because I don't think they go to the bank uh, yet. As we can see also in the LDR, the loan to deposit ratio in the banking sector also declining. Because bank actually have a lot of liquidity, but both the business sector and also bank are not really doing this loan uh, process right now. About the government stimulus and business activity, we haven't done it in the, our survey yet because I think uh, maybe we're thinking about, uh, we have many inputs uh, from uh, many presentation that I made that actually we can have a follow-up survey just to uh, compare the situation, current situation with the previous situation that I think your question about the business activity because we, uh, many of my, our survey is focused more on the consumer, not on the business sector, the business activity of the household. So I think it's also one uh, good input for our next survey. We can also ask about their business uh, activities uh, development after several months of this pandemic. Thank you for help. I think that on maybe the uh, risky question about the whether the online uh, will continue after the pandemic. I think for businesses, they will continue the online because they see the, the convenience and also the benefit in online. But after the pandemic, maybe they will recover their offline uh, activities. So I think they will go uh, hand in hand both online and offline. Because currently, I think the offline is actually down. They increase the online, but after the pandemic, I think they will continue both online and offline. Thanks, Ajo. I think that's all. Thank you, Ute. Uh, Monica, over to you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Pahal, for your questions. Uh, is the IT system holding up? Okay. Uh, I'm tempted to answer that. We don't need a survey on that, like I experienced. <laughs> IT issues. <laughs> Actually, my 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 Zoom app just uh, dropped uh, like about like ten minutes before this, and I have to switch phone. Actually, um, anyway, this is not the first time. Uh, but yeah, I think Bauti already uh, answered that questions that um, there must be like a government accelerated effort to uh, improve the IT system during this pandemic. Uh, can I share screen to answer the cash flow story because uh, I would like to show um, uh, the findings from our uh, business pulse survey. So let me share screen. Yeah. So let me show uh, first uh, like this is a survey, a representative survey conducted on 850 firms uh, across different size, like from micro to large, uh, in three economic categories: uh, manufacturing, high value added services, and tourism and creative industry. And then uh, what uh, we found here is that 77% uh, say that 70% uh, uh, of, of these firms say that they experience some uh, cash flow issues. And then if we, if we look at, uh, interestingly, um, if you look at like among those who experience reduced cash flow availability, uh, only 16% actually go uh, to market financings, while 30% uh, of them say that they do nothing. And then 24% of them say that they reduce expenses. Uh, so, and 19%, uh, even more said that they uh, uh, get loans from their friends and family. So this is just, you know, um, uh, uh, the findings from, from uh, our other survey, the Business for Pal survey. Uh, we are doing a second round of the survey uh, and hopefully uh, my colleagues can also uh, present the survey findings uh, in this webinar. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, I wouldn't know about the fiscal stimulus uh, uh, and and uh, some signal needs on on uh, uh, pick, uh, on on picking up uh, of the economic activities. Um, for Risti's questions uh, about the tax programs, so the tax programs uh, are inclusive of of uh, many of the government tax programs, and that includes. Let me read out to you. So the tax programs include uh, tax deferral, reduction in tax payments. Um, or reduction in tax rates and or tax refund, cash flow from VAT uh, refund and or income tax refund request. So it's basically inclusive of all tax, talk, uh, tax support programs that the government uh, has been uh, offering. And then in terms of uh, the, the possible uh, mismatch between government provided uh, programs and what digital merchants need, uh, and how many of the agri-food e-commerce businesses want to have their own platform. Um, so, um, I guess, okay, first of all, uh, digital merchants are only like a small a niche among like the, maybe the more than 50 million merchants out there, uh, even the micro and smalls, right? So, uh, I could imagine that, you know, uh, the government will 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 probably not not you know pay uh like so much of um so much like attention to um uh, to tailor make uh you know specific government assistance program for this like few million digital merchants uh, i think they will prioritize uh you know such programs that uh, uh that 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 cater to like uh, the more than 50 million uh, merchants out there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I can imagine that they have like uh, different needs, but what I can, what I can comment about uh, the agri-food e-commerce businesses who wants to have their own platforms, uh, I can, uh, I can see why they want to do that because um, a lot of the services that the uh, e-market uh, places offer to merchants, for example, like logistic service, digital payment service, they're already available out there. You know, uh, you can, you can, uh, you don't have to join this platform in order to be able to deliver your goods because they're already like, you know, uh, Gojek or Grab and other, like many other e-logistic uh, companies uh, out there. And also in terms of digital payments, you don't need to be, uh, you don't need to join the e-marketplaces in order to be able to, you know, set up your digital payments with your, with your customers, for example. So uh, I think the, the fact that uh, all these like services, like from logistic to digital payments are al already like available out there. Um, there's less reason for them to, uh, to join e-marketplaces and more reason for them to set up their own platforms. Um, in terms of uh, whether they will continue selling online, I mean, uh, I guess, uh, I guess yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, um, I think you know, um, uh, they, they, you know, this this pandemic uh, will have like a more prominent uh, changes in the society, in, including like behavioral. Um, so I think this is one thing that uh, one of the things that. Uh, will will be more prominent than other things, and then uh, from Bimbika, uh, uh, we we categorize the the products based on Bukalapak uh, uh, classification. So uh, we we follow uh, Bukalapak classifications in terms of uh, grouping these products. So I, uh, you know, I uh, we from the World Bank. Uh, don't really have like uh, uh, much to say in terms of how we, we, we classify the products. So that's why uh, yeah, you think, might I find think, like uh, some of these products uh, are, are, are lumped together. Yeah, Monica, I think uh, Bimbika is uh, also interested in uh, how this uh, shifting of production from traditional uh, women's fashion, for example, towards PPE is actually uh, 
some kind of coping mechanism? And if so, do you think that works? Or do you have any information as to how you know, their ability to survive impacted by this shifting of production from traditional, say, clothing towards uh, PPE, like masks, for example? Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, there there's uh, there's shift uh, from fashion to uh, to PPE and health uh, and also food. Uh, in terms of you know w whether they will continue to do so, I think it will depends on 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 the demand. Like. Uh, when the demand for fashion, for example, like pick up again, then I can imagine that they will switch, switch back. But then if the demand for mask, if the pandemic is prolonged, then I can imagine they, uh, they will continue to sell like the PPE. So I think uh, these merchants are just basically responding to, to the demand and consumption changes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I have to apologize to uh, others, uh, Firman, uh, Dendi Mulyana, Chris Manning, Wayan Sukadana, Puspa, and uh, Zafra Nakila. Our time is way up now. So um, let me thank uh, the speakers, Mba Uti and uh, Monica, and all the uh, uh, participants of this event. Thank you so much uh, for uh, uh, attending this event and let me turn this uh, back to Nuka before closing. Silakan Nuka. Hi, thank you everyone. Um, all presentation materials and recording of this will be available from our website covid19indonesia.net. I just want to uh, introduce next week's topic. We have a team from Prospera led by uh, Ibu Roxana Khan to talk about women in civil service during the pandemic. And uh, November is looking very busy for us, so we would really love everyone to join us. And then the week after that, on 11th of November, we will have uh, Suharti, Ibu Suharti from the, uh, and Pak Budi Reso Sudarmo. Uh, Ibu Suharti is the Deputy Governor of uh, DKI Jakarta, who will talk about PSBB and, uh, in Jakarta and in Yogyakarta. And after that, we have a special session, uh, the, the Sadli Lecture and the Mubiarto Public Policy Forum, which is on November 11 with Justin Lin. Justin Lin is a prophet uh, uh, who will talk about industrial policy in Indonesia. Um, and I think for, that's for now. And um, if you'd like to know more about our activities, please join, uh, please subscribe to our mailing list. Um, that's all. I think um, I'm going to end this. And um, for those who would still like to chat for a few more minutes, with the speakers, I will keep this open for a few more minutes. Thank you. Um, okay, thank that's you, all. Thank everyone. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ajo. Thank you, Monica. Hutti, Monica. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah. Sampai Jumpa. Pretty soon, I hope.